Welcome to the Women Who Change the World podcast, the place where everyday women world changers share their stories to inspire, challenge, and equip you to change your world. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Women Who Change the World. I am your host, Samantha Hatcher, and today it's just me. And that is, that's good. That's fine. I am okay with that. In fact, I am. Um, I have kind of a backlog of people who I've interviewed and something happened just recently that it's like, no, I gotta, I gotta do this episode. So a little bit of backstory. Um, my friend Lily, who I've interviewed for this podcast before, she works for the UN and on the 5th of July, we were talking and she was talking about the shooting that happened in Chicago. If you live here in the US, especially in the Midwest, you know that this happens a lot. There are in in the major cities and even in the small cities, like the, the city that's closest to me, which is Louisville, Kentucky, there are shootings almost every day. This isn't anything new. Um, and she was bothered because I wasn't more upset. Um, in a way she felt like I was desensitized to it. And I guess in a way I am, but let me explain to you where I'm coming from with this. I live in a little bitty town (laughs) that has one four way stop. Okay. Um, the graduating class in the high school is between 30 and 40 kids. It's tiny. Um, the reason we're on the map in Indiana is one, we have a, um, a post office that's in the Indiana bylaws to be on the map. You have to have a post office. And secondly, we are an exit off of I 65, which is the major highway going from Louisville to Chicago, but it's a tiny town. It really is. Everybody knows you and they know your business. You can hide nothing. So since I'm a homeschooler, everybody knows, oh, they're one of those. (laughs) It's just, it's that kind of a town. It's the kind of a town where our township um, very often raises more money um, for the March of Dimes than big city, than the big city does. It's a very giving place. But we also have a lot of poverty here in our small town. Um, We have a lot of single parents. There's a lot of children um, on the autism spectrum. And though we're not the biggest county for drug use, we live right next to it. So it really affects things. So in a way I live in this small town bubble. In the work that I do as part of the Maxwell leadership team, I work with the everyday person. There are a lot of people who work with heads of corporations. They work with the government. They work with um, the military. They, They do big. They work with the top organizations. And these top organizations do amazing things. Um, one of the people I interviewed, her name is Annie Brock. She helps military people transition from being in the military to being a civilian. Um, one of my friends, he is a coach for NASA. And yes, I, I met NASA in Atlanta. There are, there's another friend of mine who she was going on a transformation trip. Her name is Hannah and she was on a, um, in a round table podcast that I did. She went to the trip early so she could work with the people that she had agreed to work with so that she could be there for them instead of being on a flight. And then she did the transformation trip. Those people work with what John Maxwell calls the waterfall. In his book, um, How to Change Your World, he talks about there's two different types of things. There is the waterfall where you're working from the top down. These are the corporations. This is the government. This is the military. This is even the schools. That's the top down. These are the people who have major influence. But the other side is working from the bottom up. And he calls that the ladder. That's me. I work from the bottom up. 
Now, the people who work with the corporations, they get paid huge money and they deserve it because they do a lot of hard work. But where I work, I work with small groups. I work with churches. I work in um, in with non for profits. I work with agencies. I work with individual people, helping them build their lives from the bottom up. Now, Lily lives in Switzerland and the government there is different than the government here. We are a government by the people for the people. Unless you forget, the government works for us. If we don't like you, you're voted out. Gone. See ya. Have a nice life. We can even impeach people. But the interesting thing is that in that freedom, we're not going to go and cause a civil war because we don't like who came into office. There are countries out there who, if you say anything against the government, you can go to jail for 10 years. Um, if you say anything about the current government or even past dictators in North Korea, if you're lucky, they will kill you. If you're lucky. Okay. So in this thing of working with the local people, here is my philosophy about this. I make a difference that is going to be multiplied. Okay. The people who are in office, the people who are in corporations, they only make a difference while they're living. Okay. Um, Carnegie, great example. When he was alive, things were great. It gets handed down. Not so great. A lot of other big names who handed down to their children, their children were like, I don't want to do this. And in one generation, the entire corporation was bankrupt. So while it is important and it does matter, because if you can't get the people at the top to change their mind, the people at the bottom may not even do it. And I'm talking about in a corporation. But here's what I told her in my philosophy about this. I can't go into Chicago and just take my Bible and start smacking people around. It, it doesn't work that way. Nobody's going to listen to me when I'm like, you need Jesus. <laughs> doesn't work that way. But in this philosophy, which is tied to the philosophy of this podcast, I want to go in and affect the lives of women, especially mothers. I want them to see their value. I want them to understand their calling from God, what it means to create a legacy and what it means to have a deep, full relationship with God. Okay. I want those things. And then I want that woman or that mother to look around her and say, This is ridiculous. I am so tired of the way things are going here. And then she uses her God-given talents to make the world a better place. Now, sometimes that is working with corporations. Sometimes that is an NGO on the other side of the world. Sometimes that is you picking up, moving to another country as an expat and doing that. (laughs) But sometimes you have little children and your husband looks at you and thinks, this is crazy. (laughs) And you do the work small. And the work small consists of your children. It consists of your friends. It consists of the women at church. It consists of a homeless woman and her child and you bring them a meal. It consists of a woman who's due any day and is in an abusive relationship and you show up bringing a meal and loving on her. I can't go in and change Chicago as a whole, but I can work with women and I can work with organizations that start from the ground, changing one woman's life at a time. And that woman can change the life of her children by teaching what she knows. And then those children teach her grandchildren and those grandchildren teach her great grandchildren. She has built a legacy and she has perfected what John Maxwell calls 
the law of multiplication, which is one of the laws of leadership. These things are important. They're just as important as working with the big corporations as just with the government as everything else. Why? Because all of these people who are in this grassroots movement are going to look at the government and say, you need to do something about this. Okay? We don't like this. You don't get to decide for us. Um, you better get your act together or you're gone. And we're going to replace you with somebody who's listening. The government or corporation changes people by force. The people change by influence. Because you get enough people going and you get enough momentum going, things start happening. An example. Um, you buy, you find a product on Amazon and there's two products that are about the same price, but one of them has 14,000 reviews and one of them has 400. So you look at the one with 400 eh, mixed reviews, typical of everything. Nothing has perfect reviews all the way through. If it does, don't trust it. And then this 14,000 reviews. About a year ago, they kept getting all these negative responses, all these negative responses. And then all of a sudden, they fixed the product and they fixed the problem. And now they're getting all of these positive responses. Both of them have a mix of positive and negative, but which one are you going to buy? If you're thinking logically, you're going to buy the one with the 14,000 reviews where there was a problem and they fixed it. Because that means if there's a problem that you end up having, they're going to fix it too. Those are people who listen to their customers. Okay. Word of mouth review is the best marketing on the planet. You cannot beat word of mouth marketing. Period. You come up to a friend, you're like, oh, I need a haircut. And the last person I went to, they butchered my hair. Curly girl problems. It's very difficult to cut curly hair. And somebody says, oh, you need to go see my friend, Jennifer. She cut my hair and that, that person has curly hair. And this is what she did and she was great. And I haven't had any problems with transitioning from the way she styled my hair to the way I styled my hair. And I'm like, okay, give me the card. Tell me how to get hold of this woman. I need her in my life. That makes that marketing that my friend did for her is explosive it's cheaper and the quality of customer she's going to get is bigger and better than if she just put up an ad on a billboard somewhere i have certain authors that if they wrote a book you better believe it's going to be on my shelf um i had a book that a friend of mine had recommended and i want to talk about it on a different episode but she's like, it's really good. And it, and explain it to me what all it does. So I ordered the book, trusting her. And then I open the book and in the reviews section, there's like nowadays at the beginning of a book, there's other people who have read the book before you. And then they write a little blurb about it. I found five other people who I respect their work writing a blurb for this book. And I'm like, oh, you better believe it. If these people are taking the time out to one, read the book, two, to write a blurb, and three, to tell you why you need it, you better believe I'm going to be reading this book. One of them um, was, I can't remember if it was Dr. Cloud or Dr. Townsend who wrote Boundaries. And, oh, that's a whole other level. Um, John Maxwell wrote a book, uh, wrote it a blurb in there. Uh, Nicola Perra, who wrote How to Do the Work, was in there. A lot of people that I respect, them and their work, commented. So I'm over here going, yeah, I'm going to read this book. And not only did I read the book, but I learned from it and it changed me as a person. That's the word of mouth. That is what doing things here in the small and building the ladder with them up is how it works. <clears throat> so back to my conversation with Lily. 
Lily is used to working from the top down. She works for the UN. That's the, the UN works top down. That's what they do. She wasn't used to thinking about it from the bottom. And one of the last, from the bottom of the ladder, one of the last things I told her was this. I can't do everything. I can't save everyone. But I can work with the people that God puts right in front of me. I can love on the, the, the mothers and the women and the children who and the elderly who God puts right in front of me. And those people will create the ripple effects that make a difference. Here in the U.S., you get the government to try to start controlling things and we are going to lose it. I get out of my life. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just, yeah, we don't put up with that. That's the way we are. But you get people moving on the bottom of the ladder and then the ladder starts building. It's more of a spiral staircase than a straight up ladder and changes start happening. <laughs> Over the past decade, we've had a lot of school shootings and it is horrible and it makes you sick to hear about it. Not only for those children who are gone, but the children who are left behind and the parents who have lost children. It is devastating. And so the government staffed in and a law got developed where um, there's only one way into a building because all the doors are locked from the inside. And the one way into the building is directly straight to the office. And some schools even have, because they've had problems, they have had like a county sheriff just stand there. He's just standing there with a metal detector, you know. I don't know about you, but it makes me a little leery. Like, okay, I'm in here for good things, but. And those things started coming into place. So when the shooting happened in Texas. People were like, why weren't the doors locked? What is wrong with you people? How did this person get in? How did it happen? Either somebody let them in or somebody left the door open. But this is a problem because there are laws and protections in place to make it happen, to keep it safe, as safe as you possibly can. So the government instilled this law, but the people are over here going, wait a minute, you didn't do your job. Something needs to happen here. And so, because the people are crying out of, no, this is wrong. Schools started paying more attention. They started being more um, on top of it. A friend of mine who was a, the head secretary for a school in an inner city, she said, oh yeah, <laughs> We had a meeting. We were just, it was big. It was big. If this is what you do, and if you do not do this, you will lose your job. That's it. That is, that is the spiral staircase going, no, 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 no. So do I care about what happened in Chicago? You better believe I do. I do. Because the person who did the shooting was somebody's child. And the person, the people who died were somebody else's child. And as a mother, losing my child makes me ill. Thinking about another mother losing her child makes me ill. But if I spend all of my energy focusing on this top of trying to <sighs> look people, I want to serve Jesus, but there are people I want to smack. <laughs> If I focus on my emotions on this bigger problem that I can't fix, then I don't have the emotional energy to love on and work with the people who I can help. And that's what I want to come to you with today. We are women who change the world. We are women who are looking around going, no, no more. I'm done and I'm going to use my God-given talents to make this world a better place. 
I may not change the entire world, but I'm going to change one person's life today. And that person will change one or two more people's lives. And it just keeps expounding. This is the thought process behind network marketing. It, it is that thought process. It is the law of multiplication. You are sowing a seed. You're not responsible for bringing the harvest. You're sowing a seed. And so we are women who sow seeds of hope in other people's lives. And encourage them to go do it for somebody else and go do it for somebody pay it forward and we are standing here saying no more this will not happen with the people that i can influence and love on and you're not saying no to just the world you're saying no to satan you don't get access here you as a woman will stand between the voiceless, the abused, the neglected, the ignored, the unwanted, and say no more. And how do you do that? You do that one person at a time. If you're starting from the bottom and walking up the spiral staircase. If you are a woman who has vast education and influence and can be working with those the people who are in the top then you need to be doing that too knowing that there are other women who are working the other direction and we will meet in the middle we will meet in the middle and while we will never have complete world peace on this side of heaven we will leave this world a better place for our children and our grandchildren. So um, I wanna give you our battle cry. Armor up girls, it's time to battle. The world needs us. <laughs>